Hey, welcome or welcome back. My name's Amy, if we've not met before, and this is Perky Plants. Today, we're talking about springtails. So this is a bit more of a talky video. Um, and I do talk with my hands. So I'm sorry if that bugs you. I will try to keep it to a minimum, but probably won't be able to do that. <laughs> so I want to talk about springtails today. So I reckon all of the plants behind me have probably been in contact with springtails at some point. I think I've probably been living with springtails for two years, something like that. And chances are, if you're an outdoor gardener or you have houseplants, you've also come into contact with springtails. Even if you didn't know what they were, you, you've probably been in, been in contact with them. Um, I think the question that I've seen a lot kind of on Facebook groups or just in like chat like threads or on Instagram or like people have asked me specifically is you know what are these and are they harmful and I often see them being like people are misidentifying springtails as thrips on plants and they're not thrips <laughs> they're very much not thrips um springtails Okay, I've been doing like, I've been doing a bit of research into springtails recently and there's something ridiculous, like there's thought to be 9,000, like up to 9,000 different types of springtails. They are everywhere, including in our homes. Even if you haven't got houseplants, springtails have probably been in your homes. <laughs> they are attracted to kind of damp, moist environments, preferably dark. And that's why they love houseplants. They, I almost like, if I pick up a pot, like a houseplant pot, there's usually little critters running around, jumping around, and they're, they're, they're springtails. Um, what I've learned about them is that they are not insects. They are, they're really closely related to, spring, to, to insects, but springtails, um, they don't have wings and they are soft bodied and they have their mouth parts are hidden as opposed to insects where they're kind of external, you know, the little mouth. <laughs> so they're not an insect, they are considered an animal. And like in the description, I'm going to be putting like some links to some other videos and a couple of websites because some of the different types are they're cute like they can be all different types of colors and some of them are really cute and some of the videos i'm going to be linking show slow down close-up clips of them jumping and it's quite fascinating to see and um, but yeah are they friend or foe for our collections and um, honestly i would probably say friend so i know lots of people that have terrariums or um, vivariums or any kind of enclosed environment like that that's quite damp and will have organic matter in it will purposely bring them into their homes to kind of control that organic matter so that when it's decaying there isn't like mold and stuff and bad bacteria building up the springtails can help manage that um, but a lot of us myself included will experience um, springtails coming into our environments uninvited. I didn't invite them in, they've just arrived. <laughs> and some people would consider them a pest, but I, I don't, like I said, some people bring them in purposely to help manage decaying matter and that's really, that's, that's a positive. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I keep them around. I don't mind them being here. Um, they would probably become a bit of a, like a pest they can kind of group together in really large quantities, like thousands. Um, so if that happened, I don't think I'd want that many hanging out all in one area. <laughs> um, like I've read place, like I've read some, ugh, I've read some articles that say, you know, people with garages that can have like damp patches, they can kind of colonize in there and you know, you move something and they all spring into action and you just end up everywhere. And, that's not nice like you don't oh I wouldn't want that <laughs> but you know a few of my house plants in, in my little pots and stuff I don't I don't mind that that's fine um the reason I've been researching springtails 
more recently is because I discovered a new type of springtail in my collection. So I've always had, I think the kind of classic one that most of us probably know is that really tiny, shiny, kind of silvery gray one that moves quite fast. Um, I think that's kind of the most common one that people see. And I think that's the one that gets confused the most with thrips. So I've had that one, have that one. I'll show some clips of some of the ones that I have. Um, I've also had these kind of, they're slightly larger, white, thicker looking springtails. They're a bit slower than the silvery ones. Like I don't know all their actual names. I'm sure they've got interesting names. I don't know, <laughs> don't know their names. Um, but I've had those. They're quite cute to look at, quite funny to watch. Um, I'll show some clips of those too. And then earlier in the summer, on a cactus, which is bizarre, I found these tiny little bugs. And if I've still got the footage, I will put a clip in here of it. Um, motorbike. I'll put a clip in here of the, the footage that I filmed of these bugs on my cactus. I was like, what is this? At first, I thought it was um, like a juvenile aphid, like a black aphid, because it was thick and juicy, but tiny. Uh, and I was really worried because I did not want aphids in my collection. That is a pest that I you know, just didn't want in my, my collection. Um, and I was doing all this research, you know, typing into Google, like tiny black bug on houseplant and it wasn't helpful. <laughs> and then I kind of, you know, I gave up looking, kind of quarantined my cactus, just kept an eye on it. And for some reason I was, I'm not a Reddit user really. I have a Reddit account and every now and then I'll browse. But I saw a thread of somebody else had taken a photo of the bug that looked the same as one of my cactus and in like kind of asking what it was. And in the comments, somebody said, it's a black globular springtail. And I was like, excuse me? So I started looking up globular springtails and that was what was on my cactus, which is a bit weird because let's face it, damp environment, cactus, they don't really go together, but they're, I mean, they're not on my cactus anymore. They've gone, they're now in, I've got an, an Anthera moody, an Anthera moodyanum in like a cloche and they're all in there. They're all hanging out and hang on, let me get it. This is where my Anthera moodyanum is and they're, I don't, I mean, there's no way I can show you. I'll show, like, I've got some up close clips of them. They're quite cute, but that's that's kind of where they're hanging out at the moment. I haven't seen them anywhere else other than the cactus, <laughs> but they're not on there anymore and on my moody anum. So they're, they're kind of quarantined to that one area. But like I said, I'm not that worried about it. I do want to repot the moody anum anyway. So at some point they're gonna have to leave. Um, I've lost my train of thought. But yeah, anyway, so they are a globular springtail. I will put up some, some more clips if I've got any of them up close because they're like, they're really quite cute. I don't think I've got any clips of them jumping because it's really, it's really hard to capture, to be honest, which is why, like, please go and look at the videos down below in the description because it's fascinating to watch them jump basically they've got they're called springtails because they spring but like underneath them they've got um it's it's a tail like forked appendage um called a fer fercula fercula i don't know how to pronounce it but basically they've got this little device that sits underneath them so like body here head here this device and when they're disturbed the device kind of like the device the appendage the part of them it'll push down and spring them off of the like just at ridiculous speeds and um the globular springtail like spins in the air and it's something ridiculous like 360 spins per second or something equally phenomenal to that and 
like when I first saw them, I was like, oh, they're gross. I want to get rid of them. I'm like, oh, but now, now I feel quite fondly <laughs> about these little chunky springtails. <laughs> they're so cute. Um, so I'm not going to like rush to get rid of them. Um, I'm not going to necessarily encourage them either because I don't want thousands upon thousands of little tiny animals living in my home with me. Um, even though they, they don't bite or sting, I can't remember if I've said that already, but they're, they're not harmful to humans. Like they, they won't bite you, they won't sting you, they will just jump away from you. Um, but I, you know, they can, if there isn't enough um, decaying kind of organic matter in the substrate, they can eat the roots of your plants. Like if there's nothing else for them to eat, they'll eat the roots, which is, you know, if you've got a real kind of infestation of them that could cause damage but as i said i've had them in my home for like two years and i haven't noticed any damage whatsoever so yeah i think they're kind of a friend they're cute enough um if i did ever have to get rid of them i think like if i picked up a vessel and it was like teeming with them i would put that vessel outside so that they could kind of escape <laughs> to a new home and if I couldn't move the vessel and they were kind of gathering in an area, I would maybe use diatomaceous earth because that would make that area really kind of dry and inhos inhospitable for them to live in. So I guess that's how I would, I'd get rid if I felt the need to. Um, yeah, as far as I know, I've had three different types of springtails. I've probably had more because there's thousands of different types and yeah I really do encourage you to have a little look at the the link to the website I can't remember what it's called right now but there's there's loads of photos of them all like really close up and all these different colors and they're really really cute uh, I definitely recommend you have a little look at that if you're interested if you enjoyed this video and you like the kind of educational informative types of videos please give it a thumbs up so that I know to make more of them and please subscribe so that when I do make more of them, you don't miss them. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.